Hey guys, and welcome back to another A-Level Maths revision video. In this video today, we're going to take a look at some exam questions here for differentiation by first principles. Now here, as this is second year material, the only thing that we're concerned about here is doing this for the trig function. So that's for sine x, or sine theta, and cos x, or cos theta, depending on how the question notes them. Okay, so there's only actually going to be two questions here, and that's for both examples. You need to be familiar with differentiation by first principles anyway, so if you're not too familiar with that, check out my um, video here. I'll link it somewhere on this page here. Um, I'm not sure which order I'm going to upload these. This might come before that, or that might come before this. Either way, check that if you're not too sure. So let's take a look at the questions here. So these are all taken from the new exam papers, as this wasn't on the old spec. So this is for the Edexcel sample paper one. Now we're told here that theta is measured in radians. We want to prove from first principles that the derivative of sine theta is simply cos theta. Now, to give you a bit of a clue here at the very end, so we're allowed to assume the formula here for sine of a plus or minus b, so that's the compound angle formula, and we also are given a few bits of information here for the limit. So as h tends to 0, sine h over h tends to 1, and cos h minus 1 over h tends to 0. So let's take a look at this question here. So first, let's just note the formula for differentiation from first principles. So here, this would be f prime of theta, so this is an f prime of theta. Well, here we're taking the limit as h tends to 0. And for Excel, remember, you are given this formula in your formula book, so you don't have to worry about memorizing this. Well, this is going to be f of theta plus h minus f of theta, or f of theta here. And this is all divided by h. Okay. Essentially, this just gives us the gradient. So that's the change in y over the change in x. And we just take the limit here as h tends to 0. Well, in this case now, doing that in the context of this question here, this is going to be the limit as h tends to 0 of sine of theta plus h minus sine of theta, or sine theta here, and this is all divided by h. <coughs> now here, we're allowed to assume the formula for sine of a plus or minus b. Well, notice here this is sine of theta plus h, so we need to use our compound angle formula here. So here now, using our compound angle formula, this is sine of theta plus h. And using our formula here, which you should be familiar with already from your general trigonometry, this is sine theta cos h plus cos theta sine h. Okay. Now, if you do A-level firm mass, just be very careful here that you don't start getting mixed up with your um, hyperbolic trig functions like shine and cosh here. Remember, this is just cos of h and sine of h. Okay? But if you just do A-level mass, you don't need to worry about that. So here, in that case, if we take the limit then, so we're taking the limit here as h tends to 0 of sine theta, so sine theta cos h here, so sine theta cos h, so all I'm simply doing here now is replacing this sine of theta plus h with this expression here. Plus cos theta sine of h. And then in that case, we just need to minus sine theta here. Okay. And this is all over h. So what we've got so far here is the limit as h tends to 0 of sine theta cos h plus cos theta sine h minus sine theta. And this is all over h. So simply, we've not done anything too crazy just yet. All we've done is used our compound angle formula for sine here. So that's sine of theta plus h. Now here, we want to start trying to simplify the numerator if we can. So notice I've got sine theta cos h here, and we've got a minus sine theta here. So what I'm going to do now is start factorizing. So this is equal to the limit as h tends to 0. Well, in this case now, grouping these sine thetas together here, and then we factor the sine theta out, what I'm going to get then is sine theta cos h. Now, as that's minus sine theta, that would be minus 1 there. And we've also got plus cos theta sine h. Okay, and this is all over h still. So that gives us everything we need so far. And at this point here, again, everything hopefully seems straightforward so far. Now here, this is where we just need to be a bit clever with this now. At some point, we need to get this into the appropriate form that they give us with the clue. So what we need at some point is sine h over h and cos h minus 1 over h. 
So here, what I'm going to do now is split this up as the sum of two individual limits. Okay. So in that case here now, we can write this as the limit as h tends to zero of the first part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up as sine theta times cos h minus one over h plus cos theta sine h over h. Okay. So all I'm doing is splitting this expression up here in the bracket into two individual fractions. So in that case here now, what I'm going to get then is sine theta times cos h minus one. This is all over h. So that's my first limit there. And now we just add the second limit here. Again, that's h tends to zero. And that's going to be of the second part. So that's cos theta sine h over h. Okay. Now here again, we need to be clever with this part now. When we're taking a limit like this, if we have a constant term, we can apply linearity just like we would with integration. So if you're integrating 5x, for example, you can take the 5 outside of the integral. The same applies with limits. So in that case, for example, sine theta here and cos theta, they will always just be constants. So in that case here now, we can write this as sine theta here, taking this sine theta outside, that's going to be equal to sine theta times by the limit as h tends to zero of this expression now. So it's just cos h minus one over h. And if you notice, this is exactly what we needed here. So in that case, that's cos h minus one over h, okay, which is perfect. That's exactly what we needed. And again, just applying the same here with this cos theta. So that's going to be plus cos theta times the limit as h tends to zero. Now for the second part here, if we take the cos theta out, that's just simply going to be sine h over h, okay, which is exactly what we needed as well here. And finally, all we need to do now is just consider the behavior of these individual limits. So as the limit of this expression here for h as it tends to zero, well, in that case, what I'm going to get here is cos zero minus one over h. And we already know that part here. We know that part tends to zero. So in that case, this part here is going to be sine theta times zero, giving us zero. And here now, this is going to be cos theta times this limit as h tends to zero. And again, we're told in the question here, sine h over h tends to one. So in that case here, we get cos theta times one simply giving us cos theta. Okay. And in that case, then we simply obtain cos theta here. Okay. That's our final result. So that's for f prime of theta there. Okay, which is exactly what we need. Now, this is quite scrunched up on the screen. So hopefully you are following here. But like I said, these results always follow the same pattern. Okay, so that's the first question done there. So that's proven the derivative of sine theta is cos theta using the first principles. Now let's take a look at proving the derivative of cos theta here using first principles. And again, we just apply the same results. So here, let's give the result of um, First principles here, so f prime of theta. Well, that's simply going to be the limit as h tends to zero here. And again, just writing our full result out here of f prime, sorry, f theta plus h minus f theta. It's all over h. Okay. So what we've got here is the limit as h tends to zero of f of theta plus h minus f of theta all over h. You should be familiar with this result, but again. It is in your formula book, so don't worry about memorizing that. And here now, just applying that result here for the derivative of cos theta, that's going to give us the limit as h tends to zero of cos theta plus h. So cos theta plus h minus cos theta. And this is all over h here. Okay. Here again, we're given a clue at the very end of the question. We're allowed to assume the formula for now, the compound angle formula for cosine. So that's cos of a plus or minus b. And again, we're given a bit more information about the limits here. So the first thing we need to know here is that we've got cos of theta plus h. So we can use the compound angle formula. So if we make note of that, that's cos of theta plus h. And we can express this again, just using our compound angle formula as cos theta cos h minus sine theta sine h. Okay. 
So here now, just replacing cos of beta plus h with this expression here, we can take our limit here as h tends to zero as cos theta cos h minus sin theta sin h minus cos theta. That's our numerator. So we write that in full. We've got cos theta cos h minus sin theta sin h. Okay, don't forget our minus cos theta at the very end. And this is all divided by h. Okay. Now here, what I want to do, again, just like we did with the previous example here, is simplify the numerator. And again, notice we've got a cos theta here, we've got a cos theta here. So in that case, we can write this as the limit as h tends to zero. Simplifying the numerator here by putting these cos theta together and factorizing, just like we did with the previous example, that's going to give us cos theta here. I'm going to get cos h minus 1, okay? Don't forget we've still got minus sine theta sine h, minus sine theta sine h, okay? And this is all over h. And in this case here now, again, just like we did with the previous example, it's a matter of separating this limit now into two individual limits, and then in that case, using a bit of linearity to take the cosine out, for example, to obtain the form of cos h minus 1 over h. So splitting this up first, what we're going to get here is two individual limits. So that's the limit as h tends to 0. So that's a h there, believe it or not. So as h tends to 0, here I'm going to get cos theta times cos h minus 1 over h. That gives us cos theta times cos h minus 1 over h. So that's our first limit there. And in this case here, just be very careful, as this is minus sine theta sine h over h, don't forget we do need minus the limit here. So this is minus the limit as h tends to 0. Okay. And in that case here, this is going to be sine theta sine h over h. So here now, again, we're just going to use linearity here taking out a cos theta here at the front, and again, sine theta here. They will always just be cons, so we can apply linearity. So in that case here, what we get is cos theta times this limit here. That's the limit as h tends to 0 of cos h minus 1 over h. Okay, and notice this is exactly what we need here. So, so far, this is perfect. And now we minus here, again, taking this sine theta out. So this is minus sine theta times the limit as h tends to 0, okay? And the second part here, again, is simply going to be sine h over h. Again, we need this. That's what we're given. So sine h over h. So you can always use these clues here to kind of help guide you through the question. And what we know is that as h tends to 0, this part here tends to 1. And this part here, this cos h minus 1 over h, that tends to 0, okay? We're told that at the very bottom here. So in that case, this is cos theta times 0, which gives us 0 there. And we've got minus sine theta times 1, giving us 0 minus sine theta, which just simplifies to give us uh, minus sine theta there. Okay, which is exactly what we need, right? We just wanted to prove that the derivative of cos theta with respect to theta simply gives us minus sine theta there. Okay, and that gives us our result there. Okay, so... That's both questions answered there. Hopefully that's helped. But like always, any issues, just leave a comment down below. So that gives us everything we need there for differentiation from first principles for general trig.